You're listening to Her Brilliant Health Radio, episode number 21. She used to deliver babies, but now she delivers exceptional wellness for women. Welcome to Her Brilliant Health Radio, where holistic women's health expert and board-certified OBGYN, Dr. Kieran Dunstan, shares revolutionary insight from leading experts on what you need to know today to treat the root cause of disease, heal, and create the radiant health you've been searching for. It's Dr. Kieran here for another episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. So glad that you could join me today. Please help me welcome my guest today, Dr. Judy Seeger. Dr. Seeger is a naturopathic physician and the reformed pizza queen whose life changed after stepping into a health food store at the age of 18. It was in that store that she discovered the art of detoxification. Judy was so toxic that her first liver flush in 1978 with just olive oil and lemon juice caused her to become violently ill. She later learned that detoxing is not just about the body, but also about detoxing emotions, living a life of peace and letting go of anger. After running two successful clinics, she now travels the world writing, speaking, and teaching. She shares her three-step formula for detoxification in her Accelerated Healing Program, which has benefited thousands of people worldwide. Please help me welcome Dr. Judy Seeger. Hey, thanks so much, Doc, for having me on here. So excited to share what I've learned in 35 years with all your viewers and listeners. Uh, It's going to be a good show. Excellent. Yes, and I'm with my post uh, Christmas attire because I'm in the festive mood still. So welcome, Dr. Judy. And I'd love it if you could share with everyone because there are people listening right now who probably could be called the pizza queen or the Coca-Cola queen or you name the junk food queen. There are people who are probably eating in a not so healthy way and they see us and we're healthy and vital and vibrant and having brilliant health and they don't even feel motivated and it's the new year. So a lot of people are thinking, oh, I made that new year's resolution and now how am I going to do it? And I really don't want to change how I eat. So what was it in you that at 18 made you open and willing to grasp detoxing and move to a better level of health. Yeah, so it's all about timing, right? Are you ready to make that change? Are you at that point where you're like, man, I don't wanna do this anymore. And that's where I was at. So in my youth, when I was in my teens, and even as a child, I was sick all the time. I had chronic headaches and constipation, back aches, tired all the time, just dragging. And because the diet was horrible and not to say anything bad about my parents, they were Europeans and gave me the standard American diet thinking they were doing their job. But I got hooked into pizza. That was my thing, man. I got really addicted actually. (laughs) I could eat pizza morning, noon and night. And when I went to college, I put on like 20 pounds. I was eating it every day and plus all the garbage food in college. And I was getting worse and worse and worse. I was getting migraines, uh, sinus infections. I was getting sick. I was getting strep throat. And I knew that I knew, like a lot of people were like, oh man, if I continue this way, this could get serious. Mm -hmm. And and so it wasn't just about the weight. It was the chronic fatigue and and the pain and and just not feeling good that said, you know what? Got to stop this. And so I became a vegetarian first, actually. I had my first big salad all by myself. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) hey, this is like actually pretty good. Up till then, I really was a very picky eater, didn't eat vegetables at all. I mean, zero. Everything was from a can or a box. And, uh, but it was to that point, like I was ready to make the change. And that's why I always encourage all my people. I work predominantly with people now with cancer. And I say the same thing. Are you ready to make that change? Because changing the diet is the hardest thing we ever can do. We love our food. We love our comfort food. So it's really, and you being down there in the South, uh, for sure, there's some great comfort food. And so it's really hard to make that change. But you get to the point where you say, enough is enough. I don't want it to get serious. Cancer runs in my family, and I don't want to go that direction. So what do I need to make that change? And that's what I was to that point as well. 
So you were ready. And let's talk about becoming ready because a lot of people are in that kind of denial phase. I don't have a problem. I'm young. I have time to fix this. I'm, uh, my relatives didn't have a history of health problems. I can continue eating this way. So I would call that the denial phase. And then when you get in that pre-contemplative phase where pain is really pushing you and you're starting to have adverse consequences, that to me is kind of what breaks you open enough to let the light in to be ready. And it sounds like that's where you were when you had the thought to go into that health food store. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. And mm -hmm. here's something that people need to know, because I deal now uh, with people with cancer in their 20s and 30s. It's getting younger and younger and younger. And uh, it's metastasized, gone through the liver, and they're having, uh, they're scared out of their mind because mm -hmm. they're married usually, they have kids. And they're like, I'm not gonna see my kids grow up. I'm like, well, yeah, so you gotta change something. So the reason I believe that people think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm good to go, but all these little things keep adding up, the lack of sleep, hair loss, acne, rashes, constipation, low back pain, you know, all these little things you think are not really a big deal, but they are because as the body's immune system goes down, the body says, hey, you know, I can't take anymore. And that's when it goes into a disease phase. So it's a progressive thing. You could have an acute issue, maybe a headache, and then if you let it go and you keep covering it up, then it goes to subacute phase. You know this as a doc. Uh, subacute phase where, you know, then it's like getting a little bit more serious because it becomes chronic. And then you actually go into the chronic phase. And that's usually what happens is when people see that chronic phase where they're like, you know what, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. And the reason I believe is piled up so high, number one, stress, of course, everybody's stressed out from everything under the sun. But number two, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, there are hundreds of thousands of toxins inundating us every day. As soon as we walk out of our house, sometimes even in the house, there's all kinds of things in the air, in the water, in the food that we eat. Back in the day, 35 years ago, when I started, an average American diet was maybe about four or 500 chemicals at a time, which is bad enough. Now there's thousands of chemicals and the FDA only approves maybe a hundred of them, right? So all those chemicals that are being inundated in our, in our body, it, we just can't take it anymore. And that's where people need to be very, very aware that it's not a matter of if you're going to get sick, if you don't do something different, it's a matter of when. And that's a very important point for them to understand. Right, and it is when you get to that chronic stage. And just as you were talking, what came into my mind is the MSQ, the multi-symptom questionnaire that we use to assess toxicity in people. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the show notes to that MSQ so people can download it and answer the questions. And then you can kind of get a level of your toxicity from zero to 100 and know where you are. Because I know a lot of people listening may have made weight loss as part of their new year's resolution but really if you go for the health then the weight loss follows so detoxification is a key point of that so talk about you have a three-step process that you work with people you've worked with thousands of people worldwide on your three-step detoxification process can you walk people through that what what is what the steps are what's involved and maybe how they can get started yeah, it's, I, can, I got it real simple because, you know, after you've been in this a long time, you just want to simplify everything. I used to have eight steps, 10 steps, 20 steps, and I've just whittled it down to these three now to make it super easy. So it's the three R's. R number one is to rebuild your immune system because anytime you have disease of any kind, as you well know, there has to be the immune system to fight against it. And if your immune system is not strong due to stress, the toxins and all these things that are going in your body, then it's really, really tough. So a lot of people will say right away, oh, which supplements should I take? And I'm like, mm -hmm. eh, yeah, that's part of it. You know, supplements are good. You know, antioxidant supplements, there's lots of different things you could take that's good. But the food, of course, is an important component. And then the emotional, mental, spiritual, we're going to talk about in a minute. So that rebuild of the immune system has got to be the number one focus, no matter where you mm -hmm. are in your healing the rebuilding part is super important. The second part is the releasing, releasing toxins. So that can be done again in many different ways. Um, sweating is easy, taking baths, doing infrared saunas, that kind of stuff. But also you wanna work on the detoxification organs. 
so many times, and I'm not going to pick on you because you're a medical doctor, because I love medical doctors. It's not about that. But medical doctors are, you know, just have a uh, issue of like, well, you don't need to detox. What do you right. need to detox for? You already got your, your kidneys, your colon, your liver, your lungs, your skin. What do you need to detox for? I'm like, well, because of all these toxins coming in, your body's just swamped and can't deal with it. So I'm all in agreement that we have detoxification organs that are there for a purpose, but what happens is it can't handle it. So you need to detox on a regular basis. We could go into that in a little bit. And then the last R, so we got rebuild, release, and the last one is to rebalance. So rebalance is to get the emotional, mental, spiritual part. This is really the foundation. Nobody wants to start here. They all want to start with their supplements and their diet and therapies, but it's really about the emotional, mental, spiritual. If you're happy and you're at peace and you don't have any anxiety and you're just stress-free, you figured out what it takes to meditate and feel good every day, guess what? The immune system goes up and it releases the toxins all naturally because it doesn't have these blockages. The biggest thing I found with people with cancer, for example, is trauma. There's usually some kind of trauma that's caused them to flip over and become in a disease state. So maybe they've had something happen in their childhood with their parents. Maybe they've had something recently with their partner. That trauma, if, it's, if you don't let it go, then it leads into an imbalance, which makes the body into an acid state. And that acid state is a big issue because as soon as your body goes acid, then your body is imbalanced. And then we need to bring it back into an alkaline state. And everybody thinks, oh, I just need to drink more water, have more food, all this that's alkaline. It's not just about that. It's the emotional, mental, spiritual part as well that has to be addressed. So something you just touched on, I think a lot of people are wondering, whoa, wait, wait, why is that that psychological trauma causes an acid physiological state in the body. So can you help people understand that? Yeah, so there's a definite connection with your organs and your emotions. And the, the best example I could give, there's many, but um, a very famous doctor, Dr. Riker Hamer, uh, a guy who was living in Italy at the time and he was a physician and his 16 year old son got shot. And gunshot and he tried everything to help save this uh, son and and you know it was it was heartbreaking of course and he died and so dr hamer didn't do anything didn't grieve nothing a year later he got cancer and he's sitting there and says well how did i get cancer if i haven't changed my diet haven't done supplements haven't done you know nothing's changed and then as he realized he didn't deal with the grief of the death of his son he dealt with it, really dealt with it, really went into the deep emotional issue and the loss and all that stuff. And then guess what? His cancer went away, right? So then he said, well, if it worked for me, right? And I didn't do anything with diet and all that. Not that that couldn't have helped, but he didn't do that. He took it to his clinic and he worked over the year, many, many years. This was back in the 80s, uh, over 20,000 people. And he started seeing a connection and he said, okay, so if, if a woman has breast cancer, for example, there is an issue there, maybe uh, a male side, maybe there's something happened with their dad, maybe there was abuse that went on with the grandfather, uncle, something had to be, that had to happen that was traumatic. And as he made those connections, he saw that when the people dealt with that emotional, mental part, their cancer got better, like the, the, the tumors receded and, and they were like, whoa, what? you know, what happened. So he did a study and he realized, and many people have realized now over the mm -hmm. years that we have a direct connection with organs and our emotions. So for example, liver, this is a very common one, is the seat of anger. Mm -hmm. So when there's severe anger, like if somebody cuts you off and you're like, ah, that's stupid, blah, blah, <laughs> right? We all get that. But if it resides in you and you have deep anger and it sparks all the time, now that's another issue. That means you have unresolved anger from something in your past you've not dealt with. When you deal with that trauma, the liver starts to heal. And I have seen tumors get smaller. I have seen liver heal. I have seen lots of things happen when the root issue of that anger was dealt with. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do. I will say I've dealt with my emotional stuff. Let me tell you, it is not easy. <laughs> not 
easy, but necessary. And I just want to reiterate what you're saying for everybody listening, that that emotional connection is oftentimes mediated through cortisol, your stress hormone. And I know you're probably tired of hearing me say that, but cortisol, cortisol, cortisol is your stress hormone. And it's going to be triggered by emotions, triggered by traumatic events, which are kind of defined as an overwhelming stress, whether it's physical or psychological, mental, emotional, that is overwhelming to the system that the system can't handle. And that is going to affect your health. I recently did a podcast interview where we talked about ACEs and the effect of childhood trauma. So if you missed that episode, make sure to listen to it because a study, a large scale, a multi-center trial was done that looked at childhood traumatic events and the connection to disease. So it really is a part of healing. And like Dr. Seeger's talking about, it's not easy, but it's oh so necessary. And I find that pretty much all practitioners who are on this healing journey that we're both on have done their own psychological work, which is often very tedious, time consuming and and painful and requires many modalities, sometimes just plain cognitive behavioral therapy, which is the standard of care for psychological treatment in our mainstream medical society isn't enough. And sometimes outside influences are needed or other modalities. So can you talk about some tools that you use to help people first identify traumas? Because I think a lot of people don't realize that they were traumatized as a child. So they're a little bit in denial or they're unaware of that. And then what tools do you give them to help them move through that? Yeah, th- this is always a, a, a tough one, right? And, and just so people understand, like there's a scale, you know, the pH scale. A lot of people check their pH on a regular basis and look to see if they're more acid or alkaline and look which foods cause that. Of course, the processed foods cause that. And a lot of times the meats cause that. Well, an emotional scale is there as well. So let's say um, on one side of the scale, there's uh, anger, fear, anxiety, worry, overwhelm, confusion, all those will lead the body into an acid state. And then joy, peace, love, gratitude, all those things lead it into more alkaline state. So I tell people a lot of times, deal with the emotional, mental, spiritual part. And when you do, you'll actually see your body go into the more alkaline state, which is very cool, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the foods and the supplements and the therapies, but to get that over. Well, how do you do that? And it's a multifaceted approach. And again, I don't tell people to do this by themselves because it really, really is difficult. I say, look, go get a cancer coach. You Google cancer coaches in your area, and you, you could also do it virtually. Get somebody that's going to hold you accountable, that's going to walk you through. Sometimes you need somebody who's more nurturing. Sometimes you need somebody who's a little bit more kick butt, right? So yeah. it just depends what you need, what you feel like you need to get unstuck and work through it. So cancer coaches are the first place I go to. A lot of them have had cancer. They know what it takes. They go to uh, that point where they hold you accountable each and every week. I like them actually better than therapists. I don't... I don't know, therapists, they just don't get us a lot of times, right? But cancer coaches do. So that's one place I go. Another one is to just sit down and really schedule out time every single day if possible to be outside in nature. There is something very calming about nature. I'm here in Florida because I like the warm. So I go to the beach every weekend. I'm out there walking. I'm out there smelling the earth, smelling the, the you know, warm air. But those of those of the people who are in the cold, you still have to get outside to get that fresh air. There's something that takes you to another level when you're out in nature on some level, right? Every single day, preferably, but weekends, minimum. I mean, minimum. That is like a non-negotiable. You have to be outside. Some people like to journal. I like to talk. Uh, something where you're getting it out is important. But again, if you don't have somebody to guide you through, that's really tough because you could be journaling all day. But if you're not really dealing with the root issue, it's not going to get you to that point, right? I believe in prayer, uh, personally, spiritually, that's my connection with the creator Mm -hmm. to get through that, going to church, having minister to walk me through, having that community. But other people say, hey, listen, I just need to be around those who are supportive. So I always talk about building a team. Having a positive team, people who it's either family or pastor or relative, doesn't matter who it is, but somebody who's there who could just hold your hand as you're going through this process because it's painful, right? When you're dealing with trauma and looking at it and then detoxing, doing that emotional 
uh, detoxing from that is hard. And so having those people around you that say you could do it, you know that I'm there for you. They might not have answers. They usually don't. These are not professionals. These are just your friends and family and people who know that they're there for you. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that you have people on call that you could say, hey, I need to talk now. I need to have somebody listen. I need to know that I'm feeling loved is everything. That's a huge deal. So that's very important. Yes. So the emotional detoxing is a big part of healing from cancer and proper detoxification. And if you think about it, the liver really is that organ of anger in Chinese medicine and in other modalities. And so anything that you have that's blocking the liver is going to block detoxification and that anger that you feel over and over again, resentment or re-sentiment, feeling it over and over again, anger that you hold on to, is going to block that. So just everybody listening, if you think about it, it makes sense, right? If you're having re-sentiments, that's going to affect your liver, decrease your detox, increase your risk for all chronic diseases, including cancers. So really, even writing a resentment list and looking at your part in it, that which is part of the 12-step tradition, is something that I'll oftentimes have people do that's very helpful for helping to release those blocks to detoxification in the liver. So there really is a mental, emotional, spiritual part, and I love that you address that. What are some other tools that you give people in your three-step process? Yes. Yeah, so that's the emotional, mental, spiritual part, which is where I really like to get people started. And nobody does. <laughs> they always ask for supplements. I'm like, okay, we'll start there, whatever you feel comfortable with. But that's because oh, it's easy. It's easy to pop supplements, right? It is. Yeah. But, and, but yeah. It, it's much harder to look at your junk. Who wants to look at that? Nope. <laughs> and nobody's even talking about it. So that's why I'm uh, appreciating, appreciating that I could be able to talk with your people about this part because nobody is that they, they're like they don't even know how to address it so look at like you say take i also i also have my paper here take your paper and write down what is your plan of action emotionally mentally spiritually so write down emotionally what is the main one emotionally that has you paralyzed right now it could be fear of your disease it could be anxiety it could be worry overwhelmed, whatever it is, write that one word down. And then mentally, how is it affecting? Are you getting depressed? Are you getting irritable? Are you snapping at everybody? What's the deal? Write that down. And then spiritually, like, wh like where are you? Like, are you at peace or you're not at peace? Let's keep it simple, right? And then as you write those down, then the next thing, of course, is take action, right? It's always about what is the next step you're going to, are you going to call up a cancer coach, um, call me, call you, call somebody who could guide you through that to get you to the next level. We might not have all the answers, but we certainly know enough people that we could get you to the right person, right? That's really what it comes down to. So going back to rebuilding. So the three R's is rebuild, release, and rebalance. So when you're rebuilding the immune system, let's talk about that. So you, mm -hmm. get, you could use the antioxidant supplements, yes? Those are always good. I always go with food-based supplements because food-based supplements gives you the minerals, the, the nutrients that could be digested and assimilated easily. That's my thing. I'm not really big into supplements. I'm more into, let's put the whole package together. Let's look at the whole big picture, not just the supplements. But if you're going to use supplements, use the food-based ones that are easily digested or enzymes, right? So, so can you help everybody understand what food-based supplement means? Because a lot yeah, of people so food Yeah, so food-based supplements are like, you could look at a uh, supplement bottle and you could see um, vitamin C could be from azorbic acid. Well, azorbic acid is a chemical component that is truly vitamin C. I have a lot of friends who are chemists and we all argue about that all the time. And I'm like, well, yeah, but that's a synthetic version, right? That is a chemical component that is actually used for vitamin C in the body, but it's a chemical synthetic version. And I would rather see you use something more natural that has bioflavonoids in there or uh, from a source like rose hips that is more assimilable to the body. So bioflavonoids would be your root and hesperidin, those things that easily go into the system and are absorbed quickly. Azorbic acid has to go through a couple of steps in order to be absorbed into the system. And now you're putting stress on the liver. Not so good, right? And typically when I work with people with cancer, for example, they have boxes of uh, supplements and I start telling them, I said, let's look at the 
labels and there's magnesium stearate, there's silicate, there's titanium dioxide, there's all these chemical preservatives, fillers, things that really don't belong in the body. So your liver has to get rid of it first before it could use the extract of that supplement. See, so I'm like, yeah, why don't we just go straight with food-based supplements that are already a natural source that doesn't have any fillers in there. So your liver doesn't have to do any more extra work. Right. Yeah. So, so they're, they're way cleaner for everybody listening. And this is the problem with some of these. So you do get what you pay for when it comes to supplements. So the women's one a day or some other brand, Centrum, et cetera, that give vitamins, they have so many toxins in them that it really negates the nutrients that you're getting. And so what Dr. Judy's talking about is getting something that actually still has some of that chi light force you've heard me talk about still in it. And so it's recognized by your body, the life force, and it doesn't have a level of toxicity that has to be addressed with it. So go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, that's great. So that's exactly right. You want something with life in it because life will give life, right? So if you have nutrients that have life in it, that's cool. So I like to recommend people go to green powders. Uh, they don't always taste that great, but then when you mix it with your um, smoothie and your almond milk and you could add a little bit of almond butter in there and stevia, then it turns out to be actually very good. So spirulina is my go-to, uh, blue-green algae, wheatgrass, um, the green powders, like you could go to the health food store and it's green powder. And you just mix that and have it as a shake morning and the afternoon. And it's really, really nutrient filling. You feel satisfied, you feel good. It's got that life force to feed your mm -hmm. blood cells. And you're like, hey, that's rebuilding my body. That's rebuilding my immune system. And then you feel the energy, you start sleeping better, you know, all these things because it's food based and it's a superfood that's easily digested into the red blood cells. Yeah, and those green drinks or green powders, I love them because they really help people to alkalinize fairly easy, easily if they're working with their diet. Talk to everybody about water and what, how you advise people on their water consumption in terms of what type of filtration to use or bottled water when they're detoxing and yeah. healing from cancer. Well, that's like a three hour talk right yeah, there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, water, water is tricky. The Cliff Notes version. <laughs> yeah, water is tricky because there's all kinds of filters out there now and ionizers and, and whatnot. And I've been studying that for over 35 years and went from distilled water to reverse osmosis to spring water to high alkaline water. So it depends on what you're looking to accomplish. So let's say you want to detox, right? Having a high alkaline water. Now you could go, I just saw this in the grocery store the other day. It had like 8.9 uh, alkalinity uh, versus regular water, which might have like seven point something in it. And so I was very impressed, but you can't be on alkaline water all the time because your body actually needs acid. As you well know, your stomach needs acid to break down food. But if you are going to a, through a phase where nothing is sitting well, getting a lot of nausea, um, especially with cancer, a lot of pain and inflammation, sometimes you need to just switch and have a little bit of alkaline water and then go back to having spring fed water is great. Reverse osmosis water is great. Um, you know, the bottled water, the challenge of course is the plastic. The plastic yeah. leaches into the water and then there you sit. So it's better to have a filter at home that filters the water for you. So a Berkey filter, I know a lot of the speakers that you have on there, we all agree Berkey filters are great. They're stainless steel containers and then you pour the water in and then the filter just comes out. I have one as well. Um, the under the counter reverse osmosis, uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no, because it depends a lot on the type of water that you have. And then to test that, it's a long process. So I just say, look, go keep it simple, do reverse osmosis, do some spring water, um, but always store things in glass because the plastic really does leach. A lot of times people say, well, it says it's, you know, not going to leach because it's BPA proof, meaning that nothing is supposed to leach because of the type of plastic. I've done my homework and I asked all my chemist friends and they all have laughed at me over the years and said, yeah. there's no such thing as a non-leaching plastic. There is no right. such thing. It might be reduced. 
Yeah, glass. Right. Yeah, glass. Even, no, well, no, this is actually plastic from my dollar store uh, buy. Um, but even the BPA, they'll say BPA free, but there are other types of bisphenol that they'll use in there. So it's BPA free, but it's not other BPs free. So use the glass, don't use, or stainless steel, don't use the plastic. Uh, and half of bottled water has been shown to be just tap water. So if you're going to get bottled water, do the spring, but try and get it in glass. I definitely agree. And I, I think that water is a tool just like food is a tool. We don't look at it that way because it's such an integral part of who we are. And you said earlier that changing your food and your diet is going to be the hardest thing you're going to have to do in getting healthy. It's worse than changing your religion, really. Uh, and so you have to look at it as, as a lifelong gesture. But I love the Berkey filter. I use an Akai uh, reverse osmosis, which I love, AKAI. So there are lots of them out there, but I think a lot of people listening need to understand that that Brita filter that you put in your fridge is just probably not cutting it. And you can look on environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org, I'll put it in the show notes, to find a very comprehensive assessment of water filters and bottled waters, and you can really educate yourself there. Yeah, and the amount of water, like it, just to finish up that thought, yeah. like how much water you're supposed to drink. I know a lot of people, and I said this for years as well, half your body weight in ounces. Well, yeah. um, yes and no. I, I tend to go a little bit deeper on this and say, look at your urine, right? So if you're, and I see actually this more of a problem, and maybe you have too, is that the amount of water people are drinking is actually sometimes too much. And so the urine is clear. That actually puts more uh, stress on the kidneys. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, tell people, listen, if your kidney, if your urine is clear when you urinate, then your kidneys are under stress and that's not really a good sign. And so you'd rather have a little bit of yellow to your urine. Now, if it's too dark and it's like a strong odor to it and it's like really, really, really dark yellow, yes, it could be from the B vitamin supplements that you're taking. But if I would say, don't take any B vitamin for three days just to check your urine. And then if it's still dark, well, now that's another issue, right? So it should be that light yellow. You shouldn't have to go urinate. Like as soon as you drink water and you have to go, that's, again, that's not good. It means something is a little bit too stressed on your kidneys. Should be a half hour, an hour or so after you drank some water and then, then you should be able to handle it. So it just, you know, I look more, let's tell people, look in your, <laughs> I know nobody wants to do this, but after you urinate, look in the bowl, Look at the color, look at the sm smell, the smell, and look at the frequency. Those are more your barometers than how much water you're drinking because everybody's different, right? A, a, a 250 pound guy versus a 130 pound woman, you know, yes, you could cut your ounces and all that, but you still have to look at the outcome, what's happening out uh, as you're name. Right. That, that's a great point. And I'd like to add to that for people listening that your fluid balance is a really good indicator of your toxicity level because the body will actually retain water and fluid and bring it into the extracellular spaces, the spaces between your cells if you are toxic because a lot of times those toxins are so large they will accumulate outside the cells because they can't necessarily get in the cell. And then your body tries to dilute them by bringing water from inside the cells to outside. And this is why you may have heard of uh, toxicity as being a dehydrated condition because it's dehydrated. You may have enough total body water, but if you do a certain type of analysis that I'll often do in the office, you'll look at the distribution intracellular to extracellular. And if you're toxic, it's gonna to be brought extracellular. And how will you know if you're having that if you're listening? Well, that's when you get swelling of your hands, swelling of your feet and your ankles, puffiness in the face. So if you're having any of those symptoms, oftentimes it's a sign of toxicity. And I love that you brought out that the half your weight in ounces may not be appropriate for everyone and really check the cover, color of your urine. So thank you for that. What uh, other types of tools do you find important in helping people? Yes, yeah, so then I get into the natural therapies people could do at home to rebuild their body and their immune system. So those are things that stimulate the system and these are fun things that have been actually around for centuries and nobody talks about anymore. And I have eight of them. I don't know how long we have to get into them, but the one that I love is a detox bath. 
it's relaxing, it's nice, and we hardly take time to bat, uh, take a bath anymore. But clay baths is one, and then the combo baths is another, and they both have different purposes. So the clay bath is where you take either liquid clay or powder clay. Why clay? It's like, what, I, what are you doing clay in the bathtub, right? Clay is called an adsorbent. So a sponge absorbs water, but clay is like a magnet. And it's called an adsorbent, A-D, adsorbent. And it takes and magnetizes the, the toxins in your body and then it flushes them out. So as you put in your bath water, your skin is the largest detox organ, yeah? So as you're in the bath water and the clay is pulling these toxins out, it then just flushes it out and then you feel like a million bucks, right? So having like maybe a cup of clay, mix it in the, the bathtub, soaking in there 30 minutes, you're sweating, the pores are opening, the clay gets in there and starts pulling things out. It does a fantastic job to get rid of toxins. Another one is the combo detox bath, which is baking soda, sea salt, and Epsom salt. So two cups of each, baking soda, sea salt, Epsom salt. You could actually do it just with sea salt, but the three combination, it alkalinizes, which is what the baking soda does. The sea salt helps to draw out and the Epsom salt helps to relax. So two cups of each, again, 30 minutes, excellent to again sweat get the system to alkalinize more and get your body so that it's relaxing as it does it because detoxing is actually a lot of work people don't realize they're like oh i could just get these toxins out and we're good it's like a lot of work so you need to just calm your system down relax and let the water and let these substances that you're putting into the bath pull it out sometimes people like to put a little essential oil like lavender mm -hmm. to help that's great too but really, those are the substances I've used to help detox the most. So that's a great one to detox uh, just to start out with. That's super easy to do. And everybody mm -hmm. can do it at home as long as they have a bathtub. So I love that. I love these medicinal baths. Now, do you go to the art store and get clay or what kind of clay are you talking about, Judy? That's Let everyone right. know because I don't want people going to Michael's and Hobby Lobby. <laughs> That's a great question. So yeah, so bring it, we've been at this for so long. I forget to bring it down to right. beginner's level, which I understand <laughs> why you're asking, that's great. So it's called bentonite clay. We could put all these things below, but bentonite clay, it's a medicinal yeah. clay, meaning that it has been cleaned. Like you can't just go out to your yard and dig up clay and use it because there's all kinds yeah. of microbes in there. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, there's little bugs in there and little things in there. You don't want that in your bathtub, right? So you want a company that's already cleaned that out and made sure that it's pristine and that it's true clay. So there's French clay, there's red clay, there's all that. But you just want something called bentonite clay. Bentonite is the one that's pure, it's pristine, and you're not going to have any problem. You do have to go to a health food store. You can get it at Amazon as well. There's also liquid clay. So some people don't like to mess with the powder stuff, which I totally understand. Then they take liquid clay, a little bit more expensive, not much, maybe like 10 bucks a bottle or something like that. And then you take a cup and then you pour it into the bathtub and then it just mix it in and then you're done. You don't have to worry about all the lumps from the clay and it works the same way. Yes. And you know, it's funny. I remember back when my sister and I were teenagers, we used to get the, they still make it, Lacey LeBeau detox tea at the store. Do you remember that? I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and we used to think we were doing something because we drank detox tea. But what amazes me is there are people, now I know better, so I do better. And there's still people who think or find out from the health food store clerk, oh yeah, all you need is this detox tea. But it's just a diuretic and then you lose water weight and so you think you've done something. But I love that you're really giving people comprehensive tools to use. And there are so many detoxification things that you can do. And so starting with where am I in terms of my detox score, my MSQ score, my health kind of determines how aggressive you have to be. Now, if you're all the way at cancer, you need to be extremely aggressive. And so you probably need to be using all, all of these tools. Well, yeah, that. And then if uh, I always like to tell people, if you're on chemo radiation and having surgery and taking medication. It's not a good idea to detox. In fact, it's best to focus 100% on your immune system and rebuilding yourself. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if you're detoxing while you're on chemo, what happens is that the doctor will say, well, you have 12 rounds of chemo and then you start detoxing. Well, you're detoxing not only your body, but that chemo that's coming in and your doctor is going to say, hey, I just saw the lab results and it's, this is not working the same. I think we need to up our chemo or increase the amount of chemo. 
not right. something you want to do, right? So it's best to wait. If he says 12 rounds and you feel that's what you want to do, do your 12 rounds. Then after two weeks, go ahead and do the detox, but make very sure you're building up your system, right? Making sure that you're rebuilding your system, taking good foods and supplements and all these green powders to rebuild your system to help rebuild so that when you're ready to detox, you could detox. Yeah, that's an excellent point. So these are adjuvant treatments, um, not instead of. Uh, so definitely don't stop doing anything you're doing. Consult with a healthcare practitioner, a credentialed one, before you take any of the suggestions that we're offering. This is meant as education, and hopefully you've learned something. And Dr. Judy, we're going to give everyone a link to your 21 easy steps to start and stay on your detox. Thank you so much for offering that free gift to everyone. But I'd love it if you could share with everyone what you're definition of her brilliant health would be definition of your show yes what would you what do you how do you envision her brilliant health what does that mean to you um i love the concept that first of all you use the word brilliant because health is brilliant when you have that brilliant is like i could see the shining the the sparks flying out of that meaning that when you have that kind of health, that's exactly how you're going to feel. You're going to spark, you're going to feel good. I know back when I was uh, drinking my detox tea when I was 18, uh, the olive oil and lemon juice, I did not feel good. I was not brilliant by any stretch. I was feeling like a slug. I <laughs> did not feel good. But now, like you're promoting, and thank you so much for getting the word out about this, you f I feel brilliant, you feel brilliant, because we've gotten to that level where we are now learning what it takes to feel that energy, wake up in the morning, knowing that we have the energy to do what we have to do for the day, having that, just that calm, that peace, that happiness that everybody's like, girl, what are you doing today? <laughs> and that's because you have that brilliant health. So that is what I see when people want that level of health, they can have it. They just have to learn from you and all the people you're having on here and all the things you're teaching them, what that brilliance is and understand that could be theirs every single day. Yes, thank you. And we've covered a lot of material and given a lot of suggestions. So hopefully you've heard something that has sparked your interest and you thought, oh, I wanna try that. But I want Dr. Judy, if you could share with everyone of all the things we've covered, what would your top three take action steps B. It's a new year and people always turn their thoughts to improving their lives and improving their health. It always starts with that because that's your most important asset is your health. What would the top three action steps be that you would leave people with? Yeah. So actually, um, I call it the OMG. Uh, it's not, oh my God. <laughs> but it's easy to remember. It's like, OMG, it's 2019. I got to do this, right? So the O stands for get organized, right? So that means you start saying, okay, I need to make a plan because where I'm at now is not quite that brilliant self I want to be. I need to move forward and you need to make a plan. So you, again, you get that piece of paper out and you write down and say, this is what I want to work on. I'm going to get organized. I'm going to see, do I need a team? Do I need a person to help me through the coaching part? Do I need a nutrition? You know, whatever that is, you get organized and say, I'm going to make a plan to move forward in this, right? So that's the organized part. The M part is mindset. Like we've been talking, the emotional, mental, spiritual part. Where is your mind at? Is your mind in that healing brilliance mode? Or is it like, yeah, you know, I, I just want to lose weight, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's not enough. So you yeah. got to get in that mind. And if you're not in that mindset, what will it take to get you in that mindset? Do you need to talk to somebody? Do you need to have a buddy to go with this? Do you need to um, change something around spiritually? Is there a block there? What is it that's keeping you from having that brilliant, positive mindset to move forward, right? So that's the M part. The G part is get going, right? No matter how much you plan your mindset, it's not going to do you any good if you don't get out of the house and actually do it. Right? So you have to get going and you just say, okay, this is the date I'm starting. So you mark it on your calendar. You got organized as much as you can, whether you got everything or not, doesn't matter. Just say that, you know, this is the date and you put it in a big red circle 
and you say, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot for that date and I'm going to tell my friends and I'm going to get a buddy and whatever I take, I'm going to set that date. And then you do it, whether you're ready or not, you just do the best you can. And just that first step makes all the difference. Cause you're like, yeah, I've done one thing today. I had a green smoothie. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so whatever that is, if it's one thing, it's like, just do it and move forward. And that will make a big difference. So OMG, that's the one to remember. I love that. And really it's just, you know, health, good health is a choice and it's a choice that you make a hundred or a thousand times a day. Uh, and so starting with OMG, I think that's fabulous is really key. So if you're listening, get organized, check out your mindset and get going, just pick something and start right where you are. And you'll be amazed that within a few weeks and a few months, the changes that you'll start experiencing and you'll be moving towards that brilliant health. So don't feel like you made that new year's resolution or intention and you have to do it all now. You don't, it's a process and you just take one step at a time. Thank you so much, Dr. Judy, for sharing your experience with us, your journey, your expertise, your tools. You are a wealth of abundant information. And hopefully everybody listening, I know they've learned something important. And I thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on here. Appreciate your work and everything you're doing as well. Getting people to feel more brilliant health-wise, that's the best. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Many blessings. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Her Brilliant Health Radio. Hopefully you are inspired to take action on some new information you received today. A step towards the bountiful, blissful, beautiful vitality that you deserve. If you have health topics and questions you'd like addressed, please message me on my Facebook page or visit KieranDunstonMD.com and let me know. I'd love to help. Remember to share this podcast on social media and send it to your friends and family who could benefit from it too. If you love the show, please go right now to iTunes, write a review, and make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll be the first to know when future episodes are available. Thank you again for joining me. And remember, achieving optimal health isn't magic, it's science. <laughs>